Hi and welcome to another basic blowful tutorial. In the last uh, tutorials we had a look on the modulation matrix and on the modifiers. And now I want to go on with the next pages which are of course the effects. You can reach these menu pages also when you press on this button. Okay, before we have a look on uh, the effects section, there are two more menu pages. Um, uh, in this case for uh, the amplifier. You can set the overall volume of your patch. And the velocity. And on the second page you can also modulate the overall patch volume with some modulation source like envelope uh, generators or LFOs or so. And of course you can uh, set the amount. Okay, and now the effect section. Um, the Blofeld has um, two um, uh, effects for each uh, patch, which means um, it has two slots. You can control the mix with these two knobs here when this uh, light is on. And effect one has the types chorus, flanger, phaser, overdrive and triple FX. And of course you can bypass the effects if you don't use them. And the second effect has um, the first effects plus delay, clocked delay and reverb. Before I start explaining the effects, I want to say that um, the effects and the blowfold are just a nice additional feature. Um, and these effects are not um, high quality professional effects, of course, just uh, compare with the price of the Blofeld with the price of, let's say, the Big Sky Reverb. Okay? So, some of the effects are um, quite usable, like um, the Bit Crusher or, uh, let's say, the Delay, but others, like the Reverb, are more or less just to um, control how a specific patch sounds with a reverb. Okay? I use the reverb uh, right uh, this way to control um, the behavior of the patch with a reverb and when I record the sound I turn off the reverb, record it dry and then I add reverb in my um, digital audio workstation. Okay, this is how I work. Okay, um, so uh, let's start with the effects. I want to show you um, the effects in general. I don't want to explain uh, the effects um, too much. I, I just want to show you uh, my favorite settings and um, there's no need for you to write uh, the numbers down. In the end of this video I'm going to show you some cards like like this. Okay? So you can um, uh, note uh, the settings uh, from these cards and now you can um, totally concentrate on this video and um, on the settings. 
Okay, let's start with the first effect, which is of course the chorus. My favorite setting here is a mix of 16. And then you have speed and depth. So this is my favorite setting here. Let's go on with the flanger, which has similar settings. The problem here is that uh, the feedback is much too high. A value of 90 is absolutely enough. The polarity settings in some of the effects um, means um, when there is some kind of feedback used in this effect, then you can change the um, polarity of your wave from uh, positive to negative. So you can switch the polarity and uh, check out what happens. Sometimes and some pages uh, work better with a uh, positive polarity and some of the ne with a negative polarities. It's always uh, a question of trying out and uh, checking out which setting is the best. So we can increase the depth here. This is a nice flanger, I think. Okay, let's go on with the phaser. Again, the feedback is in most cases much too high. The center parameter says um, where um, the center point of your frequency um, modulation is and the spacing is the range of the modulation. And this makes um, a very nice string sound. So I start with an initial patch, just with a sawtooth. When you increase um, the release a little bit, and when you add a little bit of vibrato, you already have a perfect string sound. All what you need is just the phaser. Okay, let's go on with the overdrive, which I don't use very often because I use the overdrives in the filter section. But of course, you can also use um, the overdrive effects in the effect section. You can increase the amount of, of drive 
you can also uh, put this value to maximum and then control uh, the amount with, uh, with the mix knob. And here you can choose different um, types of distortion, like clipping, tube, Pickup 2 is um, quite nice, I think. This is very heavy. But I think the overflow um, curve adds a very nice and harmonic um, frequency range on top of your original patch. Um, there is another parameter which is called post gain and uh, this parameter um, increases the volume of your distortion. Sometimes the distortion is so um, is, um, it's not loud enough so you have to increase the volume a little bit and you have a cutoff which is of course a low pass filter um, at the end of your um, distortion chain. Very heavy distortion. And then a very nice effect is the triple effects. It's called triple FX because you have three different effects here. One effect is the overdrive, then you have a sample and hold or bit crusher. It's not exactly a bit crusher, but it causes uh, similar uh, results. And uh, you have a chorus. So let's try some settings. I choose values between 5 and 20 um, depending on um, how much um, or how much digital um, dirtiness I want this patch to have. So sometimes 5 is enough and it's important um, to turn down uh, the overdrive to hear some effect. No effect here, but now let's try some different sample and hold values. If you increase the amount, you hear um, uh, the exact result. And you can add chorus to this. Okay, these are the effects which are available for effect 1 and effect 2. And now we go on with the effects which are only in the second slot available. After triple effects you can find delay here. And you have two different types of delay. The normal delay and the clocked delay which is depending on um, the um, BPM um, of your internal clock or of the MIDI clock. Let's start with the normal delay 
which I normally use just um, to create some kind of um, uh, comp filter effect. Uh, the comp filter, by the way, is also uh, from a technical point of view realized with a delay. So um, you can easily uh, recreate a comp filter with a delay. Just try some settings like um, a lot of um, amount here and then um, try some lower length settings here. And also you have to increase the feedback. very unorganic, very metallic sound, I think. Okay, now um, we just skip the clock delay. I'm going to explain that um, as uh, the last effect. Let's go on with the reverb. And as I said before, the reverb is not always um, usable or good. But let's try um, my favorite setting here. I just um, set the different uh, parameters and then we, go, we are going to change them. And we are going to hear the differences just um, to understand um, what the parameters do. Okay, so this is my favorite setting. As you can hear, it's not perfect, but it's okay. I think it's okay. Okay, the um, high pass and low pass um, are, of course, filters which control um, the sound which is um, fed into the reverb effect. And I turn down um, the low pass and turn up the high pass just to get um, a nice um, input range of uh, the sound. When you have a too low high pass, then uh, there are too, uh, too much um, low frequency um, um, amount fed into the effect so that your effect doesn't sound uh, nice and smooth and it sounds uh, too it's hard to explain. There are just too many low frequencies. Okay, and when there's when there are too many high frequencies, then the effect is also not that nice. As you can hear, the high frequencies make the reverb unrealistic. compared to this, where the high frequencies and the reverb are not uh, so dominant. Okay, let's go on with the diffusion. I think a high diffusion makes the sound a bit softer and a bit more organic. 
Okay, and the size, of course, is the size of the room. And the shape um, changes, uh, changes the, the uh, character a lot. Check this out. So a high shape value makes the sound more metallic, whereas a lower value makes it more organic. And then decay and damping. I think uh, that the reverb works internally with um, some kind of delay ef um, effect or um, code from a technical point of view. And then the decay is um, the feedback volume and damping is the feedback filter. A low decay value causes the sound or the effect, the reverb um, to stop very quickly, whereas a high value See what I mean? Okay. So, um, and the damping of course. Very short effect because um, the feedback is through a, a low pass filter. And here's no filter at all. So I think um, this is uh, the best uh, setting combination possible. Now we can go on with the clocked delay. Okay, um, to show the clock delay, I want to start the arpeggiator. Let's try some sound here. different combinations of speed and delay values. The clock delay has different parameters, of course also the mix, the delay length um, relative to, um, to the clock. I'm just uh, showing um, um, the the values whole note triplet, half note and quarter with dot. The spread parameter um, uh, controls uh, the, the ping pong between left and right channel and the negative values um, are exactly like the positive values but with left and right um, as switched. So you can copy the values um, exactly. You have also feedback of course and again polarity. Some patches work better with a negative polarity and some with a positive. And of course, um, an, an additional cutoff value. Okay, um, it's important to realize that the delay changes with uh, different spread parameters. 
which uh, means uh, that um, the delays for left and right are not exactly the same. And with different values um, you get um, different results. So you have to check out um, which combination of BPM, length and spread um, are the best for you. And as I said before, I'm going to show you uh, the different um, combinations which I prefer for the three um, different length values. This, this and, and this one. But of course there are also other values with very fast delays. very long delays. One important fact here is that um, when you choose this one it's not exactly 10 bars because um, the internal delay or the, um, the highest uh, delay time possible within the blowfield is not long enough so it um, um, breaks down the delay to the um, longest possible delay um, which fits within um, this um, let's say uh, time uh, time steps for uh, for the chosen length okay let's try some different uh, values here and we are going to start with 90 bpm can hear some problems already there is a bug when you choose um, special combinations between um, BPM length and spread then you get a result like this So beware of uh, value 43.
Okay, these are my favorite uh, clock delay settings. Before I before I show you um, the parameters um, as an overview, I want to show you um, what you can do with a nice um, delay setting. I prepared a sound. As you can see here, I have a clock delay. Um, the mix is 50-50 with the original signal. Um, length is quarter with dot. Spread is 25. I have a lot of feedback with negative polarity. Um, I um, opened the low pass filter a, a bit. And let's hear the result. Okay, so as I promised, um, the different settings, if I don't forget it, I'm going to write them down also in the video description. Okay, um, of course you can pause this video to write uh, the settings down if you want. i just show you the cards here. This is the phaser. Overdrive and triple FX. Reverb. The normal delay with values between 4 and 11. Then the clock delay for BPM 90. Again, the warning for this combination, BPM 90, half note, and uh, the spread parameter on minus 43. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next tutorial will be, of course, about um, the arpeggiator, finally. Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, um, make a like. If not, make a dislike. Um, write comments. Um, share your thoughts with us. Um, tell me um, what you liked about it, what you want to see. Um, maybe you have some ideas for sounds or other tutorials or so on. So um, just tell me what you think and share your ideas. Yes, and thanks for watching. Have fun with your blowfield and have a nice day.